welcome to the second edition of Phoenix Magazine. With the devastating consequences of climate change growing more visible throughout the world, hundreds of teenagers in Korea gathered to demand action in climate change in September. Let's learn more about the hashtag Fridays for Future Youth climate strike as KI students share why they care about the climate change. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you! So I've been organizing the school strike for about um, two months, I think, and um, the organizer uh, asked me to do a speech, so I, so I wrote one and kind of did it on the spot. Climate change affects the most marginalized communities in our society. It affects um, poor women of color more than it does um, wealthy men and etc. So I think it's a human rights issue as well. My name is Clement and I'm, I go to Dwight. Well, I came here to protest and to let the government know about and to like make our voices he, uh, being heard. A lot of scientists say that in about 2050, a uh, lot of there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish and lots of other facts. In our generation, there's more that we can do than just use our hydro flasks or abandon our plastic straws. I think coming to these kind of events, it allows people like us, so teenagers like us, to raise our voice and actually make a difference in our community. I'm Cherry Song, and I attend Chato International in Songdo. From Chato International, I've gathered my friends who act who care for the environment and climate change. Uh, my speech was mainly about uh, questioning the government of how much they care about climate justice and our humans' future. What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! Thank you! <laughs> if climate change like continues and worsens every time, our future generation might live on a lifeless planet and uh, we don't want that. There will be no future and all of this education and like um, finding your passions and those kind of stuff, it becomes meaningless and we need to realize that there is no plan B. This is the season of celebrations and disappointments, with many seniors having viewed their college results. However, some students have managed to leave the stress of becoming a college student by taking a gap year, an experience that we'll cover today in the story. So when college results came out, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, I expected more of myself, and I felt like that expectation wasn't really fulfilled or met. At the end of my senior year, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do and with my college results, I wanted to take some more time to actually think about whether going to college right away out of high school is something I want to do, especially because I didn't know what I wanted to study. My name is Yu Jong Lee and I'm KIS class of 2017. 
I just wanted to go to any college, whether that college would be a right fit for me. I just wanted to know that I'd be going through the same steps as everyone else was. It was the first week of August. It was really, really late, almost like a month before school would begin. I finally heard back from Princeton. They were like, hey, we really can't make it work this year. And that's why I was like, well, I guess if I'm already in Chile, I'm not going to fly out to my other school. I'll take the gap year and, you know, just reapply and see how it goes. My parents, surprisingly, they encouraged me to take a break, especially because we were moving to Chile. It'd be the last time we'd be moving together as a family, being stationed elsewhere. They thought it would be a great idea for me to explore a completely different culture. But I think when I decided to take the gap year, it was more than that. I think I just needed the break to figure out what I needed to do. So during my gap year, when I actually went to Chile, um, because I, I was always interested in psychology and like social work, I found a volunteer group that did social work in foster homes for child abuse victims. So I decided to work there for about seven months to really see whether clinical psychology or just therapy itself is a right fit for me. I was working in Paris like after I finished my job in Chile. I was really happy. I was like, this is like a decently prestigious job. I'm a high school grad. I like the city I'm living in. I love the people I work with. I don't need to go to college. Honestly, I could do this for the rest of my life and be happy. When my visa ran out for France, I had to go back to school anyways. Um, and when I got to college, I walked in, I had four years worth of classes planned out. I knew exactly what classes I was gonna take during what semester and what certificate programs they were gonna satisfy. And first semester, I took a psychology class that I absolutely hated. Coming from a place where I've already worked, I knew what I needed and that side classes that psych class wasn't giving me what I needed. For my freshman year summer internship, I looked around to see like an internship that would help me like narrow down my area of interest. I worked at a law firm for domestic violence victims, so it's a different approach to a similar population of women who have had trauma. But instead of approaching it from a psychology perspective where you're working directly one-on-one, -on -one, with the survivors, I was approaching it from a policy perspective. My whole Princeton experience wouldn't have been the same if not for the gap year. And even just, I don't wanna call myself mature, but I feel like those little experiences of having to grocery shop for myself and like plan out laundry after work, it's helped me grow into a completely different person who has a different perspective on how valuable my own time is and how valuable this special little bubble in college can be. Senior year of high school is a very scary time. You're taking harder classes, you're wrapping up a lot of your activities, and you have to apply for college. But you're making a decision that, I don't want to say it doesn't determine your life, but it de I think it determines the way you look at what you want to do f further out in your life. Going to a research university compared to a liberal arts university is completely different. And also like debating on what you want to study when you get to college. Those are things that you don't really know the answers to when you're graduating high school. Because all you have is a high school experience. And a high school education isn't necessarily something that gives you enough background information to help you decide what exactly your interests are. And if you're going to be working in the real world, you want real world experience before you can decide what you exactly are passionate about. So I think it's great to just take a deep breath and it's going to work out. You're going to be happy. I think I'll be declaring public policy and it it, has, it doesn't fit in, in the big plan that I planned out for myself. Like before that week before freshman year started with all my 32 classes planned out. But I'm happy that I'm switching things around 
and I'm excited to see where it's going to take me. This story is about Minjun and how he's grown as a musician, but it's also a story about the opportunities that open up when one participates in the KIS music program. Let's check it out. So I started playing um, back when I was in fifth grade, so I've been playing for about seven years. Um, so I play for the wind ensemble and the jazz band, and I really like I really like playing jazz because it's a lot. It's really different from like the classical music that I play in wind ensemble, and I don't know, it's just something that I started back when I was in middle school for fun. So I've been just continuing that um, until yeah, senior year. I think it's like you go and meet so many friends from like different international schools, and the fact that you get to like keep in touch with them after it's really. It's really special for a lot of us, like a lot of us who go to these festivals. And so it's like you get to enjoy creating music with these people, but also to stay in touch after. So I feel like that's like the main reasons why like, people go to these festivals. Like I'm kind of like an introvert and I'm really shy, but then like playing in the jazz band and playing like getting the spotlight and playing solos in front of an audience, I feel like that really was my biggest fear, um, just stepping on stage and performing in front of people. And I feel like by playing the jazz band, by playing the jazz band for like a lot of years, I was able to kind of tackle my fear rather than to like back away from it. And I feel like that's one of the biggest accomplishments that I've made in high school. And yeah. So I feel like when I first started playing music in general, like I was really like nervous um, when I got on stage, and that really had an effect on my performance. But as I continued playing um, in front of people. I feel like I learned how to like, enjoy myself on stage and be more relaxed. And I feel like that really um, developed me as a musician over time. And I feel like I definitely have more fun um, when I play in front of people. Yeah. I, so I'm, a, I'm currently a senior, so I, I really want to continue music in college, um, whether that's through like, like extracurricular activities. But I also want to, like, you know, when during like breaks, I want to get meet up with like my friends from KIS or other international schools and keep, you know, playing with them and just enjoying music. I feel like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I think back in middle, uh, no, uh, last year during junior year, I think I definitely practiced the most, and that was like two, three times a week um, at home, and I think that really improved. I really, I really improved through that, but. Uh, I've definitely practiced less now because <laughs> um, I have a lot of things to handle, but I still try my best to make time to practice over the weekends or after school. The sequel to last magazine's cooking show puts KIS students to the fun challenge of making their very own tomato sauce and pasta. Let's get to know them through all the successes and challenges they experienced. I hope that I'll realize maybe some potential that I might have in cooking. That's what's so interesting about food, is you can use the same ingredients to get a completely different vibe. It's good though. I don't really ever cook. I am worried because I don't really cook that much and I'm not really good at regulating burners, so I hope I don't burn the whole PGB studio down. I don't know how to make pasta sauce. I'm just going to put stuff in a bowl and mix it together. <laughs> Honestly, I saw the last challenge and I was like, pancakes can't be that hard. But now that I'm here, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> You're just separating from oils and, and water. Yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. I've added too much oil. Oh my gosh, this sauce is not. I hope I like the oil from when I like almost be fried on my vegetables, like mixing with the sauce. Did my thing go off again? I think it's pretty well. I'm gonna have more Parmesan. Because you guys kept being salty about my <laughs> reason I use so much cheese and butter is because cheese and butter make for comfort food. It's just a great all our final, so she needs some good butter and cheese. Smells so good. How pretty! Oh my goodness. I got the oil in the beginning with some olive oil by sauteing it. Oh my gosh. And we want to come to my house and cook. <laughs> I'll give the job to you. Lots of layers of flavor. Mmm, it's yummy. 
I can definitely taste the cheese and the basil or the basil. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. I like it. You did well. You did really well. It was yummy. Hi, I'm Leah. <laughs> Hello, Leah. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see. Well, I, this is pretty. A really different taste from his. Oh, really? That's what's so interesting about food, is you can use the same ingredients and get a completely different vibe. It's good, though. I don't taste as much herb as his, but I can taste the cheese and very tomatoy too, and it is plated beautifully. It looks lovely. Thank you. Good work. Mmm. <laughs> good, good job. Yay. Oh, bonjour. Here you go, chef. Ah, and so tell me about this lovely creation, monsieur. Um, I diced up some onions and I kind of sauteed that with actually what I originally thought was like a lot of oil, but I just sauteed it with some mushrooms and some onions and some um, garlic for flavor. I added a lot of cheese because I just, I don't know, I like cheesy pasta. Okay. Yeah, I made a few adjustments. Mmm, good. It is very yummy. And this is just the right size portion yeah. for someone too. Well done. Mm. I do like cheese. Well, it's a hard decision because they all had wonderful attributes. I thought they're all plated really nicely and they all tasted differently. At the end of the day, if I had to go with one and it's because I am heavy into the veg, I'd have to say it was the first one, plate A. Oh. But they were all very good. <laughs>